Hello! Welcome once again to A Pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, in order to keep our wondrous YouTube overlords happy, I would like to start the show with a reading from a book by Jane Austen. It's called Pride and Prejudice. Please enjoy. I think we read the first page last time, so now we will continue. <clears throat> this was invitation enough. Why, my dear, you must know, Mrs. Long says that Netherfield is taken by a young man of large fortune from the north of England, that he came down on Monday in a chaise and four to see the place, and was so much delighted with it that he agreed with Mr. Morris immediately, that he is to take possession before Michaelmas, and some of his servants are to be in the house by the end of next week. What is his name? Bingley. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, to be sure. A single man of large fortune, four or five thousand a year. What a fine thing for our girls. How so? How can it affect them? My dear Mr. Bennet, replied his wife, how can you be so tiresome? You must know that I am thinking of his marrying one of them. Is that his design in settling here? Design? Nonsense! How can you talk so? But it is very likely that he may fall in love with one of them, and therefore you must visit him as soon as he comes. I see no occasion for that. You and the girls may go, or you may send them by themselves, which perhaps will still be better. For as you are as handsome as any of them, Mr. Bingley might like you the best of the party. My dear, you flatter me. I certainly have had my share of beauty, but I do not pretend to be anything extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give over thinking of her own beauty. I think we're safe. On this pleasant Sunday stuff and things, I'm smoking a little bit of Mer de Cheval. Literally translates to horse manure, and I just recorded my first impressions video of this blend. Um, look forward to this posting on Wednesday. It's an interesting one. I didn't even look up what the component blends, or the, the component teas. Remember, we can't say the dreaded T word now. Uh, we'll get into that whole thing about the demonization that I talked about last week. Um, I'm experimenting with some amusing things to try to subvert YouTube's algorithms. Uh, but anyway, I didn't know what any of the component leaf was in this blend, and I sort of tried to tease it out as I was smoking it for the first time, and I'm interested, interested to see if I got close. And if you watch the video on Wednesday when I'm going through it, and if you know what's in this, um, let me know in the comments if I got close because it's kind of fun. I just smelled it and sort of had a theory as to what was in it, and then I tried it out, and my theory sort of modified a little bit. But it seems kind of kitchen sinky, like someone just threw a lot of different stuff in here. Um, but not bad, and I'm smoking it in my doo -doo -doo -doo, beautiful Japanese Tatu pipe by Tajima that was sent to me by, uh, I can't, can I even say it now? TobaccoPipesJapan.com. If you haven't seen the video about this pipe, you should check it out. I posted it a couple weeks ago. I love it. It's fantastic, and I'm quite enjoying it. But gang, we have lots to go over in this Sunday Stuff and Things. I need to remember that that's the name of the show now. Um, I have some feedback from the last episode we're going to get to, and then I have quite a few questions from you, the viewers. But we will start out with <laughs> my girlfriend, who watches the show... And it's kind of funny for me because I have friends and family who don't even really know that I do YouTube. And I'm not the kind of person who's like, hey, watch my channel, watch my channels, watch my channels. I typically would prefer if people who know me well don't watch it. Not that I'm embarrassed of it or anything. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's weird. Um, but she found out about it, of course, which, you know, if you're dating somebody, it's kind of hard to hide. And I wasn't trying to hide it. And she started watching it. And she enjoys watching the Sunday video every week. And it's funny because last week I get a text from her that is quite irate. She was quite irritated by the reaction that one person had to the video. And it's really funny to me because it's very sweet that she gets so invested in it and gets like personally offended if somebody says something mean on the comments, which by this point I've been doing YouTube for over five years now. 
you're not really gonna offend me if you say something in the comments. Um, but she still gets offended and I don't know, it's cute, it's sweet, it's very, uh, it's telling, I guess, that I, I guess it's the same way for me. If someone were to say something mean to her, I would be very annoyed as well. But she texted me and was like, mm, this person in the comments. And so I looked into it and I guess for feedback for this episode, I guess I might as well go to that comment and read it for you. Let's see if I can find it here. All right, and it's also funny to me because, you know, every time I do a video about demonetization or something like that, I always say, and of course, there will be one person who in the comments says something like, oh, you're so selfish, you're so greedy. And of course, even having said that, someone had to go ahead and do it. So here, here's the first bit of feedback for the last video in which I talked about the fact that dozens of my videos were getting demonetized. This person says, unsubscribed. At least you know you're selfish. Pipe smoking used to be the focus. Now it's taken a back seat to your capitalist YouTube venture. Good luck in the future. So I responded like, yeah, sorry to see you go. And of course I pinned the comment because it's not my job to berate people who act like doofuses. You guys always do it for me and I feel kind of bad. I put, the, I put it as a pinned comment and then everyone's like, okay, you're a doofus. Um, but I understand that that's gonna be the reaction from some people, but for the most part, overwhelmingly, you guys were super nice and super supportive, and I really appreciate that. We're gonna to get to a little bit more feedback where people are just talking about YouTube demonetization in general, but some of you were wondering, was my little joking experiment working where I was reading Pride and Prejudice or reading The Stranger for the first 30 seconds of the video, trying to avoid certain words in the video, um, I was avoiding certain tags in the videos as well. When you upload a video on YouTube, you put tags on to show for search engine optimization for people to be able to find your video. And so I tried all those different things because I'm trying to sort of triangulate what is going on in the algorithm. Why are some videos demonetized and others aren't? And I will report to you that the two videos that I posted last week have not been demonetized yet. Um, and that doesn't mean they won't be in the future, but for now they haven't been. The problem with that though is that, with that though is that, we'll just, we'll just ignore that. The problem with that is the views are way lower on them because I had to get rid of so much of that met metadata that would help people find the video. And I don't know if I had to do that. I'm assuming that the algorithm that YouTube employs goes through the tags as well. So I don't know. Is it worth it to, you know, try to subvert the algorithm if then not very many people are going to see the video? It's this weird catch-22, but also if a video has been demonetized, YouTube doesn't want to show it to you because they don't get ad revenue from it either because they can't sell ads for it. So it's a weird catch-22 where if I get it monetized, maybe fewer people will see it because I can't use all the search terms and meta metadata that I would normally use to get it in front of you. But if I do use all that, it might get demonetized and then not as many people will get to see it because YouTube won't bother putting it in front of you to see. So it's weird. We're still navigating the waters here trying to figure out exactly what's going on. But for now, we're just gonna continue having fun. A lot of people enjoyed the readings from Pride and Prejudice. Maybe we will continue that. I don't know, we'll see. It's, it's meant to be a joke, but maybe it'll turn into a segment. I don't know. So that was the feedback or some of the feedback from the video from last week. Also, as I mentioned, this week on Wednesday, we will have Mère de Cheval first impressions video posting on Stuff and Things Plays. Those of you who have been following that channel know that I've been doing Sekiro, which is an amazing game. Absolutely love it. Um, also, I've been playing Titanfall 2, the single player campaign, which I enjoy quite a bit. But a game just came out this weekend. It was Super Mario Maker 2, man. And I am an old lover of Mario games, and I never had a Wii U, which is what the first Super Mario Maker came out on. And so I was really excited about getting this game, and I thought, you know what? This is a video series, or this is a game where I could do a series that could kind of continue in perpetuity because it's a game that never ends. People make levels for Mario and then you can play them. And so I thought I might at least introduce a couple videos this coming week 
Titanfall will take a break for a week and we'll do a few Super Mario Maker 2 videos. If you guys like them, if you'd like to see more, we will intersperse them in uh, for the months and probably years to come because I've had a really good time already just playing some user-generated uh, courses and playing through the single-player mode in the game. It's really cool and I might try to make some courses myself. It's basically this giant tool set for you to make Mario games or Mario levels from various different styles from Super Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, what else, Super Mario World, Super Mario U, and then also uh, Super Mario 3D World, I think, are the different styles that you have available. And it's just super fun and I'm really enjoying it. And so look forward to one of those Mario Maker videos posting probably Monday. I think today was going to be Sekiro or Titanfall, I can't remember exactly. You will have seen it if you're following that channel. And then tomorrow on Monday, we'll have our first Mario Maker 2 video. And let me know in the comments for that video if you want to see more. You're definitely getting two this coming week. And then we'll see if we intersperse some more throughout the coming weeks, months, years. Let me know. But now, we might as well get into some more feedback. We'll actually, I guess, just start off the hashtag ask stuff and things section of the show because it starts with some feedback from the last episode. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the show, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will do my best to answer it on the next Sunday. Ask, ask Sunday stuff and things, that's what it's called. Um, also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me on Patreon, leave a comment, leave a message, and I will answer it on the show as well if you wish me to. And I also want to thank everyone. There were a lot of people who really stood up and stepped up during the last, after the last episode, talking about, you know, a 50% decrease in monetization on my YouTube videos. There are a lot of people who increased their pledges on Patreon. I had some new patrons as well. So that really means a lot. I really appreciate that. Remember, you don't have to do it. If you want to do it, there's a link in the description box below, but I really just love you having uh, a vested interest in the show, people who are really involved, leaving comments. That's wonderful. So don't feel obligated to do Patreon at all. But we have a comment from Professor Walker at Kurt3 Dine 786 who says, in regards to the last episode, I've been having more videos demonetized and some of them seem to make no sense also. It is discouraging. And this seems to be a trend kind of YouTube wide, not just in the pipe community, not just in, uh, I guess, subject, subject matter that you could maybe assume could get demonetized. It seems like it's becoming more and more widespread. We had the adpocalypse a while back uh, where things were getting really bad for a while and then things sort of kind of equalized a little bit. It seems like we're in another period of really bad demonetization. Uh, we have another comment from Eric Fur at BT Eric who says, Another YouTuber that is quite large, over 100,000 with T content, was demonetized recently. Most everything. It looks like the apocalypse is here. So just more confirmation there. We have a comment from Eric Furman. Motorcycles. Ugh. At Eric Furman who says, <clears throat> At YouTube. At Google. What's the deal with demonetizing YouTube videos that discuss review T and F? Think of ATF and think of what the T and F would stand for in ATF. These are legal products that people enjoy. That is true, um, but it also seems that the companies or many of the companies that advertise on YouTube, or at least YouTube is assuming that many of the companies that advertise on YouTube don't want to be associated with those products. T and F. Uh, and I guess I can understand people can make a choice what they want to advertise on. I don't like it if YouTube is making the choice for them or being overly aggressive about it. YouTube can do whatever they want and Google can do whatever they want. Google owns YouTube. It doesn't mean that I think it's a good decision because YouTube was built upon people doing weird things and it being kind of an open platform. And now they are very much tamping all that down and making it very kind of clean, very sanitized, very corporate. And they may think that that is the best thing to do in order to lure in advertisers who of course are very wary of any whiff of controversy. But I think what built YouTube into what it is right now was that very freedom 
that kind of Wild West sort of approach. And when that's gone, I think YouTube is gone too. It will not be a, a cultural phenomena as it has been for the last eight years or so. Um, and now we're getting into the actual questions for hashtag ask stuff and thing. This first one is from Zylo. He says it's pronounced Zylo. Could you do a revisit it on Davidoff Flake Medallions? This is the strangest review and first impressions. It was both funny and odd. I almost wonder if you just had a bad tin. I couldn't even remember reviewing Davidoff Flake Medallions. And so I went back and looked and I was really not a fan. And I know that a lot of people are a fan of that blend. And that might be something worth trying. I think maybe because I was just so vehemently opposed to the blend in the review. So maybe I will put that on the list for a potential revisited. Thank you for the suggestion, Zylo. Next, we have a question from Bill Ball at Bill Ball PHC. Bill Ball says, any thoughts on doing a video where you recommend replacement tees for discontinued lines? For example, I need a Dunhill London mixture replacement. Help! Uh, yes, I have thought about that. Um, we, we did a whole very long, very exhaustive video series on trying to replace Dunhill Elizabethan, and I finally picked GLP Stratford, which, again, remember, I wasn't trying to say was a, a flavor match for Elizabethan, but it was just something that could kind of take the place of Elizabethan in my rotation. Um, but I will look into that. Things like London Mixture, things like uh, My Mixture 965, some of the more popular Dunhill blends, maybe we will look into finding replacements for those blends. Next, we have a question from Snail Tracks at Snail Tracks. Snail Tracks says, um, wait a minute, is this a copy or a redo? Oh, no, 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 okay, here we go. <clears throat> I was never a cigarette smoker, but I've always enjoyed a good cigar and I smoke and a smoke from my pipe. I'm looking for a tobacco that's easy on the nicotine, but heavy on the flavor. Does such a blend exist? Do you have a recommendation? Thank you and love the show. Man, so many banned words in this question here. Um, easy on the N, but heavy on the F. Well, I can say F, or I can say flavor. I don't, I'm just gonna abbreviate every word now. Um, easy on the N, but heavy on the flavor. I would have said, well, there are blends like, I haven't had the new version of that. I was gonna say something like, uh, Peterson Irish Flake, or maybe Solani, um, what is it called? The Solani blend, Burley, Dark Burley Flake, Burley something. What's the Solani Burley? Oh my God, this is gonna drive me crazy now. Uh, I'm thinking of like strong Burleys, which don't necessarily have, well, there's quite a bit of nicotine in Irish Flake. It's, hard, it's really hard for me to answer this question because I don't feel the N the same way that a lot of other people do. So a blend has to have quite a bit for me to feel as though it's strong. And it's hard for me, if I don't really notice anything at all, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's very low on the N. So maybe this is a question best left to the viewers out there. If you can think of a blend that has a lot of flavor but not a lot of the big N in it, let the uh, uh, snail tracks know because um, I'm really blanking on this now. I know if I'm if I recommend a blend, it's going to be something that isn't necessarily very light on N. So help me out, viewers, and help snail tracks out as well. Next, we have Don O Trepley at seed underscore of underscore weeds. Don says. The elephant in the room for our mutual hobby is that U.S. availability of most U.K. European tobacco brands has been virtually nil in 2019. Any information on what's happened, even foreign websites with plenty of stock, no longer ship to the U.S. Hashtag ask stuff and things. Um, I would assume that that is just a result of the FDA deeming regulations and the fact that most blenders, if they are European based, know that a lot of their blends will not be able to be released in the US anymore unless they pay a very large fee. Um, and I think a lot of people are just preparing for the fact that we, we might as well not distribute these blends in the US anymore because it's just not profitable. Um, so I think as US pipe hobbyists, it's going to be increasingly difficult to get European blends, especially more recently released European blends. That was what was going on when there were all these uh, blenders trying to replace Elizabethan, 
they weren't making those blends available in the US because they were new. And if you make a new blend, you have to submit it to the FDA for approval and you have to pay a huge fee to do that. And most people just aren't going to bother because the pipe hobby is a small niche hobby and it doesn't have the kind of broad appeal that would make an investment like that worth these companies' wiles. So unfortunately, if you are a US pipe hobbyist, you are not gonna get a lot of those newer blends from Europe. And it's kind of the reverse of what was happening for a long time, where if you were in the US, you were getting everything, um, all the US blends and all the European blends. And a lot of Europeans were feeling left out because they couldn't get a lot of the US blends. So I guess it's sort of the seesaw has tipped in the other direction. Next, we have a question from Tyler at Tyler Brewbaker 20. Tyler says, <clears throat> Hey Bradley, sorry about all the crazy stuff and things, wink, happening with the homeless and YouTube. I was wondering if your lawyer was able to help you at all with your car crash situation. Hopefully he has. You're amazing. Um, thank you, Tyler. And yeah, there's some more homeless stuff I could talk about, uh, more police action going on and everything, but maybe we'll save that week. Uh, the car crash thing is just sort of stalled. I have a very, let's say, relaxed lawyer, and I have to kind of light a fire under him to get things going on. I, I'm not, not super confident that anything's ever gonna be resolved as far as that goes. Next, we have a question from Milo Sibrant, at Milo Sibrant or Sibrant, I'm not sure. Milo says, Previously made a video highlighting your pipe tea staples. Dunhill, Elizabethan and Standard Mixture, Gowitz Squadron Leader, Peterson Irish Flake and Solani 656. What are your four to five staples at the moment? Hmm. Well, because of the generosity of some viewers out there, uh, Elizabethan is one of my staples again, or it has been lately. I've been indulging myself and having that quite a bit recently. Also, uh, GLP Stratford has been in there. I have been enjoying Gaslight quite a bit by GLPs. And I can't say that I have any other staple staples right now because again, it's just been a rotating uh, blend that just whatever I'm reviewing, whatever I'm trying for uh, a first impressions or a, re or a review. I recently was doing Dunhill Flake because I was doing a revisited uh, episode on that. So I don't really have a four or five staple rotation now, which is kind of weird. I do want to try Peterson Irish Flake again. Um, that's going to be something that we do for Revisited for sure. And then maybe I will slowly build up a bullpen again of four or five staples. But for now, no. Now it is the best part of the show. It is the time where we thank our Patreon supporters, those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like... Glenn. Thank you so much, Glenn. We couldn't do it without you. People like Kevin Moore. Thank you, Kevin, for being a supporter on Patreon. Derek. Thank you very much, Derek. Cody Striegler. We really appreciate it, Cody. Thank you very much. Nathaniel Hills. Thank you, Nathaniel. Kirk Crompton, attorney at law. Thank you very much, Kirk Crompton. C.W. Piperman. Thank you very much, C.W. Garrett. Just Garrett. Thank you very much. Adam Loveless. Adam, thank you very, very much. Also, Ryan McFadden, one of our newest $25 supporters, just like Corbin Borbin, a very new $25 supporter, and MD of the North, our newest $25 supporter. Thank you all very much. And now it is time for the Maniac tier, the crazy people who support the channel at $100 a month. They're also entitled to a Skype conversation with me every two months or three months, I can't remember. Uh, they are crazy, they are maniacs, and they are Peter Straub. Thank you very much, Peter. You're a good man. Also, Bob McGee Motorcycles. Bob, I'm very sorry that a motorcycle interrupted my thanks towards you. It'll never happen again. But gang, that was the Sunday stuff and things, and uh, seems like I was talking a lot. Hopefully I said something during all of that. And tune in this week for the first impressions video of Merde de Cheval. Also tune in to Stuff and Things Plays for some Mario Maker and some Sekiro. But we will be back next week with more Stuff and Things to discuss. There are a lot of motorcycles today. But until next week, until we meet again, I've been a good friend Bradley. Things are flipping around all over the place. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. 
In my opinion, the younger son of an earl can know very little of either. Now seriously, what have you ever known of self-denial and dependence? When have you ever been prevented by want of money from going wherever you choose or procuring anything you had a fancy for? Those are home questions, and perhaps I cannot say that I have experienced many hardships of that nature, but in matters of great weight I may suffer from the want of money. Younger sons cannot marry where they like.